Good evening and welcome to This Week in Joe's Basement. I'm Joe and this is my basement. So, This Week in Joe's Basement, we're going to explore the meaning and the origins of Joe's Basement, culminating in a special presentation of our pilot episode, the very first episode of This Week in Joe's Basement, the television event that shocked the nation or at least managed to befuddle a few television engineers over at Chicago Access Corporation. But first, some viewer mail. Ah. Uh, our first item of mail this week comes from Matt Hillock on the southwest side. And Matt writes to us the following. Joe, I think your show is great. I first saw it a couple weeks ago. This past summer I moved to Chicago from Fort Worth, Texas. I did not think that there was any way you would eat the dog food. What is with that show before yours? Why do they break for commercials when they are on public TV? That guy who hosted is a really weird guy. Just wanted to tell you that the show is great and keep it up, Matt Hillock. <laughs> well, Matt, based on the following unsolicited artwork which you included with your letter, I don't think you have any business calling anybody weird, much less Bill Fisher. Uh, the first item we have here uh, is a uh, very talented rendering of some sort of skull-like demonic creature with long flowing hair which is steeped in some sort of groove. Very scary, Matt. <laughs> uh, the second item here is uh, a more standard glowing-eyed demonic figure atop a house which says, Welcome home. Not too welcoming to me. Oh, my goodness. All right. And the third, um, the third piece of artwork is by far the most Freudian piece of the three. It's some sort of dinosaur-like creature with a woman's head which is squatting over a pool of unknown liquid and surrounded by this derisive laughter and labeled freak. And this is one of the scariest toilet training fantasies I've seen in a long time. Well, Matt, uh... I like you already, <laughs> but uh, I think on your way to art school, you might want to seek a little psychotherapy. <laughs> All right, um, our second piece of uh, viewer response this week comes from one Ronald Davis, who writes to us in response to our two shows on education, on uh, teachers and student viewpoints at Kenwood Academy in Hyde Park, and uh, comments on some things that he found interesting about the shows. And uh, well, I find it interesting that for someone who is concerned with education, that Ron doesn't seem to feel any need to use capital letters. I guess that's sort of a stylistic choice. Or, Maybe seen Sex, Lies, and Videotape too many times. Anyway, uh, Ron concludes his letter by suggesting as a topic for a future show that perhaps we should interview people from various walks of life and see how their educational choices or lack thereof has affected the way their lives have turned out. Well, Ron, that seems like a pretty, uh, pretty interesting idea, actually. Sounds like work, though, so we'll see. Finally, our third piece of viewer mail this week is from Alex. Yes, Alex, after all these weeks, is still searching for Michelle. Alex, Alex, Alex. You should have been watching the show, because if you had, you would have seen that in episode 16, you would have seen what Michelle had to say about this, which is that she's a married lady, and she's got a kid and, uh, and a husband, and she's just not as adventurous as she used to be, and she's certainly not willing to have any liaison with a stranger like you. Um, so you seem like a nice guy, Alex, but I think a cold shower is definitely in order. <laughs> All right, so much for the viewer mail aspect of this week's show. In general, any response that we receive through the mail, we will respond to it or present it in some way on television, as you've just seen. So write in to the address that's on your screen. Okay, well, last week we had our viewer call-in show, and that gave us an opportunity to find out more about what your concerns are out there in television land. And in particular, one recurring question that we got often was, um, you know, what is this show anyway? You know, what is a bunch of guys sitting around the basement. What do you guys usually do? Is, have you broken into Channel 32? Is this Wayne's World? Okay, this is not Wayne's World. Get that straight. Wayne's World uses a two-camera setup. Get a life. All right. Well, to help clear up this whole what is Joe's Basement question, what we've decided to do is provide you with a special Joe's Basement starter kit, which begins with one surly host, comes complete with two-day stubble, t-shirt depicting a local Hyde Park eatery, slightly unkempt hairdo, one convenient container of snack food, two bare feet, slightly unwashed, thrust towards the viewer, and most importantly of all, a surly irreverent attitude and a proclivity to insult the viewer, rightfully so, I might add. Add to this a dash of maniacal laughter, 
a slightly skewed perspective on things. I'll be glad. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be glad. I'll be happy. A proclivity for self-reference for those of you philosophically and intellectually inclined out there in the audience. Just remember, I'm the one who said it. I, I asked for cigarettes. I want a pack of... I want a candy bar. Add also one of any number of small, burrowing insectivores with large expressive eyes, concealed ears, and soft fur. Flounder in mole sauce. That's just scrum delicious. At a visit with a man in the street. Excuse me. A mad craving for cigarettes. <laughs> and ultimately, whatever the fuck we feel like. <laughs> All right. Now, another question we've had from people. Uh, besides what is this show anyway, is more specifically, what does the opening segment mean? You know, what's with all those pictures anyway? So, uh, I think to clear things up, I've decided that uh, I think um, somewhere in this basement, I think I still have the meaning of the opening. Let's, uh, let's go check this out and uh, take a look for it. Uh, let's see. Meaning of the opening. Meaning of the opening. Uh, let's see. Um... And over here, um, follow me into the other room here. Let's see. I keep a lot of shit over in this bookcase over here. Maybe, maybe I can find it. Uh. God, these techies can be such slobs. Hmm. Wonder what happened to that. Hmm. Guy owes me four thousand dollars, but I still have all his film. <laughs> Bear with me for a moment here. Ah, uh, well, maybe over here by the TV set. Um, if only I could find my remote. Where is my remote? Ah, it's in the fridge. I should have known. All right, so um. What I've got here is I've got a uh, I've got a tape of all the uh, opening pictures, and I can lead you through what they actually mean. Okay, here is Samash wearing my fur hat. Paul and Dan preparing to wrestle. Earl juggling five balls. Jingus catching the frisbee about to fall flat on his face. There I am reading. There Martin and Anton are playing the video game. There we are playing Civilization. I'm looking silly in my Medici t-shirt. There playing Civilization again. Martin sticking his tongue out. There we got some fireworks. Anton's drinking the Pepsi backlit just like on TV. Dan is catching the frisbee flying through the air. There John Erickson is looking pretty studly. There's John Kohler with his old girlfriend. Ha! Get rid of her. There's Paul looking pretty mean in his leather jacket. Martin's not impressed. Stefan sort of staring off into space. He's retarded. There's Dan leaning back on his motorcycle. He later crashed it. There's Anton reading while the rest of us are playing this game on the Macintosh. We are playing uh, Civilization again. There's Jengis about to throw the frisbee after he fell down. There I am again in my fur hat. All right. So, uh, well, that's basically what all these pictures mean. We just thought we'd get you cultists a leg up on the American public on that one. If you're wondering about the music, it's some classical shit uh, known to us plebes as the Masterpiece Theater theme, uh, played in a revisionist neo-basement four-fingered style by Paul Pomerleau. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get back to the show here. <sighs> See what we want to do here. What was that? Oh well. Right. So um, let's get on with the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to present you with a reprise of our opening uh, pilot episode of This Week in Joe's Basement, the very first episode on structural cinema. And uh, the version that we're going to give to you is uh, not full length. It's been trimmed by about 10 minutes to accommodate this bit of shtick that you're watching right now. And, uh, but I think you'll be happy for the brevity because this is about structural cinema, which is film or video, which is structured to make you aware of the passage of time. Like that, for example. Uh, so uh, this episode, you'll notice a few things about it, uh, as being the very first one, the one that uh, engendered the show. Uh, you'll see that even from the very beginning, it contains all the essential ingredients of Joe's Basement, that being the, uh, the surly host sort of reclining in his chair, munching on snack food with his mouth open and thrusting his bare feet in his irreverent attitudes towards the viewer. Another thing about this show is that it, uh, it was part of what we now fondly look back on as our fuck the viewer period when we really didn't think that there was anybody watching the show. And uh, we were probably right at that point. So uh, I think you'll see that uh, this attitude is definitely reflected in the show, which uh, also engendered the slogan, uh, which is that you shouldn't watch too much TV because it's not, not good for you, not good for you at all. Right, anyway, so um, 
This episode is going to initiate a series of reruns of Joe's Basement, in which we're going to dig up some of our old episodes from our early undiscovered period. And what we're going to do is, starting with the next episode, we're going to run a new show every week. Not a new show every other week, but a new show every single week. And if you're ever confused about that, or anything else about what's going to be on next on Joe's Basement, check the Reader Want ads. We're pretty good about putting an ad in there. Right. Um, Another thing is that uh, if you ever have any problems with your signal on uh, Channel 19 for any reason during this or any other public access cable show, don't call up Access. They're doing a fine job over there. Call up Group W or Chicago Cable, whichever one serves you. A bunch of pricks, man. They don't give a shit about Access Television. Call them up and harass them. And if I can find their phone number, I'm going to put it up on the end of, on the on the screen at the end of the show. Um, I don't think they're taking any phone calls this late at night, but you should definitely bug them first thing in the morning if you have a problem because they just think you viewers out there are complacent and uh, let them know that you care. Right, so I'm going to let my alter ego take over at this point and present to you the pilot episode of This Week in Joe's Basement. Good evening and welcome to This Week in Joe's Basement. I'm Joe, and this is my basement. So this week we're going to learn about structural cinema, and for that, I'm going to change my shirt, and we're going to go upstairs. Hello. You know, some people think that uh, public access cable is really boring. Well, you know, that's just because I think that uh, sometimes just not that much effort goes into it. So, uh, hang on a sec. So filmmakers have this idea, which is called structural cinema, which is a piece of film or video whose function is essentially to make you aware of the passage of time. A classic example of this is Andy Warhol's piece, uh, 24 Hours of the Empire State Building in Real Time. And, and the idea is that there's some value in you actually sitting for all this time and watching some process take place. So I'm just going to sit here with my beer for the remainder of this 24 minutes here and uh, read the newspaper and uh, <laughs> well, I don't recommend that you watch it. It's going to be extremely dull. So I think this would be a really good opportunity for you to do something besides watch TV. You know, like uh, get outside, read a book, write a poem, do something constructive with your life. TV rots your mind. It's not good for you.
comics. With a little bit of bagel, it's not half bad, really. You know? Mm. <laughs> yeah.
Oh, this is so fucking gross. But it feels good. brother's shirt. Show real people on beer commercials, you know. I mean, it's always this sort of like you know, this, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. But they should show real people on beer commercials. Like, guys, you know, Read this Chicago land, then. I don't know. Can't do it. Mm.
that's all for this week so uh I'm sure it's going next week when we uh I, I, I don't really know what we're going to do next week to be honest with you <laughs> yeah hmm